Okay. So Beis Hashem, what we're going to try to do, to learn tonight, is the first opening of Hashem Svasay Tiftoch, Fiyagat Yilosach. Hashem Svasay Tiftoch, we say that Hashem, Hashem is Svasay, we say that, particularly Hashem, Alav Dalet Nun Yud, the name Adon Noi, um, and we pronounce it, that name, and that name, Alav Dalet Nun Yud, Svasay Tiftoch, should open up my mouth. We spoke a little bit, a little before, from the Magi, the Torah Magi, that when you say this, you should imagine that the Shekhin is resting on your mouth and uh, the Shekhin is talking through you. Why do we say this this little passage from Tilim? So the... Really, we're supposed to be Nisvan Gulula Tfilah. That's the whole idea. We're supposed to connect Gula, which is redemption, the story of Gwagad Mitzrayim, Gal Yisrael, and immediately connect it to Tfilah. That we have to do them to connect. But there is a passage that we say in the beginning, sort of like an entryway. We say Hashem Sefasek Tiftach is an entry. What is it, the idea of Hashem Sefasek Tiftach? So the, the idea will be is the difference between Gula and Tfila is redemption and, and prayer. And Tfila is that Gula means something is already in a state of Shlemus, that it's already in a state of its perfection. Tfila is a state of Chesser, that there's something, there's a lack. And a person's sick, a person's, uh, a person's struggling with uh, livelihood, whatever a person's going through, there's some state of lack, and there's a cock, there's basically, there's like a jam, there's like a blockage, where, what, what is really a person that's a, a person that's sick? A person that's sick means that the arteries, the, whatever, the, 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 the flow of blood, whatever is hap- happening in the body, is not flowing correctly. That means that the, the flow is not moving in a correct form. What we say with Hashem Sefosay Tiftach is we're saying that the fact that we have to that we have to daven that we that we're going to we're going to pray the reason why we're davening is because there's a blockage and there's some type of misconnect there's some type of disconnect between the way things should be and the way they actually are and the shefa the flow that's coming down is not going down correctly there's blockages now this can be understood. On two on two levels, and it's very important to understand this. One is to understand this on like a, a on a like a, on a a macro level that there is some type of spiritual, metaphysical, higher level blockage that doesn't allow, in simple language, the way we were talking before, it doesn't allow the world of Atzilus, the world of perfection, or even beyond the world of Adam Kadman, which means the world the way it exists in its perfect form and its in its conception in Machshava Dumig Da'ak, which means in the, in the way it's perceived in the creator's mind, Kaviachl, the way it's perceived in that in that perfect state. And there is a blockage the way it from the way it exists in its higher state to the way it's reflected in its lower state. Right? So there's the the the, the flow, the shafa is not coming out in a correct manner. This is on a very macro level. But it's also important to understand that this is also referring to on a micro level. There's blockages within yourself that are not allowing for you to receive it, to receive the shefa, to receive this flow. And then, since in Shmanes, in the Amida, you're going to try to concentrate, the blockages would also be considered your machshav azars, the thoughts that are impending, the, the intruding thoughts that are not allowing you to focus. You're trying to focus and allow for the field to come through you, and but your mind is jumping to different locations. That's going to be another type. In a very, very broad strokes, because we're going to try to read the, the writings of the It's a little dense, and we'll try to get through it, but we'll, we'll get through it, is that there are two types. There's two general forms of, of constrictions. Of clipper, um, if you want to call it, clipper constrictions. There is something that's called the the shin the the uh, three hundred and twenty forms of clipper, sheikh clipper. This is connected to. This is connected to um, sheikh. Is connected to the five times 
the word din, 64, five times, is 320. So din is, is judgment. And there's hey gvurs, there's five levels of gvura, of restriction. There's gvur of chesed, gvur of, 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 of gvura, gvur of teferis, gvur of netzach, gvur of netzach, and hoid. And it's chesed, gvur, netzach, hoid, and yesoid. So there's the five gvurs, five levels of restriction, because every level has, I don't want to get into the details of this, but there's five, five madrigas, five levels. So you have, the total is 320. These are connect, these are the gvurs of chachva. So Chachma is the highest level of the spheres. So the, the, the negative side of the Chachma is Shin Chaf Gvoris. That's why also the idea that it's later, it's not brought down by the Ari. It's good. One is the, the, the idea of a Nar. But Nar in Yiddish means a fool. And, or uh, a Shaita means a fool. And these words also numerically is 320. So it's like the flip side of Chachma. The flip side of wisdom is foolishness. Okay, obviously these are, these are on a level of Gematria, a level of numeric value, but Shim Vav Tesei is 320, right? So, the Menes Oscar writes this, but this is the idea that it's the, the side of Ches of Chachma, and then this is one form of Din, There is, um, it, it also is connected to there is 32 times the name of Lakim appears in Bereshis, in the first story of creation story, the name of Lakim appears 32 times. 32 times, ten, every, every sphera has 10, so it's 10 times 32 is 320. If you ever heard of the concept of Rapach Nitzaitzis, Three, 288 sparks. You ever heard this idea? Rapach Mitzaitzis? That's, that's 32 times minus 1. So minus the essential one, so you have 31 times 31 times 10. 10 times 31. So you have Reish Pechas, which is 288. Are you following this thing? A little bit? Okay. This is the idea of the Sheikh Mitzaitzis. And then there's also the, the Klippa from Bina, which is seen, the klipa of Chachma is seen as a masculine klipa. I know these are just words, but we'll try to understand them. The klipa of Chachma is considered masculine. The klipa of Bina, Bina corresponding male and female, Ava'im, Bina Yisei Nital Isha, the idea of Bina is connected to a woman. So the idea of, of the feminine is connected to the idea of the Sheikh Ritzoitzes and this Par Ritzoitzes. Par is, is, par is 280. The 280 is, um, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the numeric value of the Mansapach, of the five, five final letters, final mem, final nun, final tzadik, tzadik, is, 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 is Mansapach is 280. Okay, these are the two, two big stories of the tzadik, of sparks. Sparks that are, are trapped and sheikh, in 320, sparks that are connected to 280. There's a, there's a lot of Torah about this because if you look at the if you look at the story of uh, of Yitzis Mitzrayim, it's all about 280. Paroi is 280. Is par is 280. So there's a lot about Shoifer is 280. There's a lot of these words, big words that we talk about that actually have the roots of the idea. Paradumas obviously is connected with 280. The 280 is going to be this this this, this form in the Tzitzis. Okay. The first, we're going to talk through a few things that are very, very toyasari. So, if you're not familiar, it's going to be a little complicated, but it's just stay put. We'll get through it. So, this is, this is, these are the two, these two forms of sparks, okay? Now, the Hashem, Alev Dalen Nun Yud, Hashem Savasai, the idea of Alev Dalen Nun Yud, this name is going to be the name to unlock or to break open these klippa, these two forms of klippa, the Shach Nitz- Sheikh Nitzayzis, 320, and the 280, and the Par How does this work? So let's, let's, let's read a little bit in the readings and the teachings of Dari, and we'll understand this a little, a little further on.
And ultimately, just one other point, Hashem Sefas Tiftach is going to end, that's the beginning of Hashem The final end of Hashem is going to be on Korach Shalom is 376, with the four letters is 380. And that's the same numeric value as Hash, the Yudke Vavke is Maka Al Shem Adnai. The Yudke Vavke is, is 10, 5, 6, 5. If you place that on top of Aleph Dalad Nun Yud, so you'll have 10, 10 times 1 is 10. Yud on top of Aleph is 10. The next letter is He on top of Dalad. So 5 times 4 or 4 times 5 is 20. So you have 30. The next letter, Yudke, is Vav, is 6. 6 on top of 50, Nun, right? Nun is 50. 6 times 50 is 300. So what do we have number? What, how do you get 321? How do you get 321? You just got the 3. You have 300 from the... 25 times and You have 320. 320. And then the final one is Yud K Vav K on top of Yud, which is 50. So the total numeric value is 380. So Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud, that's, that's being opened by Yud K Vav K, will be the same numeric value as the word for Shalom, for peace. So you start Shemnesser with peace, but it's peace that's still concealed. What's peace? Peace is shleimus. Shleimus means that there's, there's there's something is missing. Something is 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 not in its completion. Something is not. There's something that's there's not something is not aligned. So you start off with breaking open the idea of alav dal nun yud, and eventually you're going to get to avarah chasam yisal b'shalom, which is going to be there's going to there's going to be peace. And if you understand this correctly, just important to understand that if you if you understand this correctly, you're always answered. Your tefillos are always answered in shemun it's always answered. If you do Shemunasi correctly, your tefillahs are always answered. What that means is already a conversation, but it's always answered. Just remember that. It's, uh, when you say, uh, when you say, if Einu Hashem, heal us, and you say, it's happening, it's present tense, you are healed. How that works, but, but understand that. Okay? It's not like you, you say something and it didn't work. It works. How it works is already, we have to understand so you reach the point of Shalom, you reach the point of Shlemus, of completion at the end of Shemun So we're going to start here with two, a few, again, these are, it's going to be dense, I'm telling you right now, unfortunately, this is the way that Rizal writes. The first shtickel is from, the first piece that we have here, is not from the Ari, it says Kuv Beis on top. It says Shar Prati Hashemus. Uh, Actually, before we get to that, to do something very quickly, which is much more simple, if you look at the Yaris Dvash, the, which is the first page, I don't think we did it. The Yaris Dvash speaks about Hashem Sufasa Tiftach, the Yaris Dvash is Yonis and Ipshis. And he talks about this idea of uh, why do we start the Shemnesu with saying Hashem Sufasa Tiftach? It's the first page. So he says something more like very simple that you can understand. He says it's like it's an ethical idea. Kakalish Baruch Hu. A person has many different um, gates to their mouth. They have their lips, then they have their teeth. And okay, I'm sorry, we're in a pischishar tzedek. He says, I'm a sha'arim. A person says Hashem Tiftach means the Arzvash makes it like a like a, a Musa uh, idea. That a person says Hashem Tiftach saying, I recognize that my mouth is such a precious thing, that it has many gates in order for me to open up my mouth to speak. And yet when I'm about to daven, I say Hashem Tiftach, you open my mouth. So if you're if you if you if you recognize the power of, of speech, that you're you're so in awe of the power that 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 life and death is, is is dependent on your on your on 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 your tongue, which means the power of of speech, and you say that I I want to speak to you, Hashem, but I, please you open up the words for me and you say those words, which means I recognize that there's so much power in my words, but Hashem, please open up these words. So it's a kol shikens. He says it's a kavu If a, if when you're daven, you have to do this. It's a kol shikens throughout the day when you see a person in the street. You should say Hashem sefasei tiftach. You know, before you, you say hello to another person, or before you engage with another person. You understand? That's the Musr part of it, why we do that. Okay, that's a Musr, that's like more an ethical understanding of this. But let's go back to this, this, this Sefer that we have in Kuf Beis. 
is the Pardas Yomayinim. The Pardas Yomayinim is from the Ramak, from Moshe Kadavero, which is the, which is the, not the Rebbe of the Rarizal, but lived a little earlier than the Ari. Also in Tzvahs. So the, 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 let's read this quickly. So he writes that, he write, he's talking about the name Alav Dal and Nunyud. Okay, that's the important name that we're trying to understand. And he says like this, That the Sefer Oyer, you see that? Where is that? It's in the right column, and it's the Rashi letters. So I think the fourth page. No, the third page. Yeah? It says in Shari Oyer, it says like this, Shari Oyer is from Yosegi Gatalia. Yosegi Gatalia is one of the famous Spanish book of Bolo, the Talmud of Belafia. And he writes like this: Tzarech Adam Ladas, Kashem Yisbarach Yeshloi Nun Dalit Shemus Meruboim B'Tzir Yutke Vavke. Yutke Vavke, the name Yutke Vavke, has fifty-four possible tzurufim, fifty-four possible ways of combining these four letters. Let's say Yud a Hey and a Vav and a Hey, or a Hey and a Yud and a Vav and a Hey. Whatever. There's 54 ways, different ways how to be done. This can be done more. Um, it's whatever. This is the way it can be done. Uh, it's 24 really, but this is the way it's done. It's done in 54. And if you have four letters that you can form in 54 ways, then what you have is four times 54 is 216. So what is 216? This will be 216. 216 is Gvura. Just, just hold, hold with me a second, okay? That, that's the idea of Gvura, which is restriction. And what we have to do with the, with the drawing down of the 52 letters, 52 names, is to draw down into creation, which is Kedimin Neshama, which is like the soul of the body, in Vayisa Vayav Vayet, which is the 72 name of Hashem, there are 72 names of Hashem, which is three verses in, right before the Kriyas Yamsuf, there's three verses that have 72 letters each. The first letter of the first verse, the last letter of the second verse, the first letter of the third verse, and subsequently each way doing that continuously, are the 72 na- names of Hashem. Now, if you have 72 names of Hashem, and each one is connected with, has three letters, three times 72 is 216. So the, but 72 is the numeric value of chesed. Chesed is 72. So chesed three times becomes gvura. So the, the animating, the animating koyach that comes down into these nun dalet shemus, I'm sorry, the nun dalet shemus is the animating koyach that comes down into, into the gvura. That's why the world is created in the place of Adnus. Adnus is already where it's where it's 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 perceived as din. But you should know what the what the Shaiar is saying is when you look at the world and you see it as din, as judgment and constriction and 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 separation, and you see concealment, you should know that in in the din there's the nundalad. What is the nundalad? The nundalad is the name of Hashem. And all the din is actually the name of Hashem. And then he, he says exactly, he says, uh, I, 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 I have a Kabbalah, that this is, the, I have a tradition, this is the way we do this, the, the 52 names, the 54 names. Okay, this comes from the Ramah. Next, what, next page is, uh, it's not easier, I'm sorry, but um, it's going to be, but it's, it's good to once in, a while, once in a while to learn a shtickle uh, result. It's not, uh, it's good for you in a shaman. So this is for Shara, I mean, this is for Dari. We're going to, we're going to try to do Beis Hashem. And today we're going to finish. We're not going to, we're not going to, we're going to finish this packet. Beis Hashem. And what we're going to try to do is like this. I'm going to try to show you what the Arizal said, what you're supposed to be doing, and how the, the Baal Shem took the exact same kavana of the Ari, but spun it in a completely different way. But it's the same thing, but in in very simple, in simple way of thinking about it. One is very cerebral, very in the mind, like you have to be misboinant, so... If you daven, you close your eyes, you imagine this tziruf, this combination, and that's that's the kavana. And in the balshentov, it becomes very embodied. It's it's actually not only is it embodied, but it's experiential. You're supposed to experience whatever the Ari is talking about as a conception. The balshentov is going to talk about it as an experience. 
so it's it's fascinating to see how how the Balshem took these same ideas of the Ari, Davin in the Kavanas Ari, but in a completely different way. So let's let's see what the Arizal says. And bear, bear with me. So let's let's try to go through this quickly. Soid Hashem Sefasei Tiftach. This is the beginning. The secret of what Hashem Sefasei Tiftach is. Ki techaven ke adayin hu bebriya. You should understand that when you're davening, you just came from Oilam Abriya, right? We just we mentioned that the four stages in davening. So you're still in the world of Bria, which is still a world of bar of separation. Va'alav dali nun yud, the name alav dali nun yud, one of the names of Hashem, is connected to Malchus. There are ten names of Hashem. The ten names of Hashem, the seven names Shein and Chakim, but there's ten general names. The ten names of Hashem correspond to the ten spheres. So Yudke is Chachma, Eke is, is Bina, uh, Yudke Vavke is, is Tiferes, Chesed is Kel, Gvur is Elokim, Netzach and Hoyer is, is Avayi Tzvakos, Elokim Tzvakos, Yisoy the Shakai, and Malchus is Alat Alat Nun Yud. These are the names. So Alat Alat Nun is connected to Malchus. That's connected Malchus. That's the idea of Malchus. The Svasai, my two lips, has two parallel lips, that's Netzach Vahoid. Why is it Netzach Vahoid? Because the lips is what's going to project my sound that's internal is going to project, project it outwards. That's Netzach Vahoid. Netzach and Hoid and translated is, is, is confidence and humility, which is really the externalization of an emotion. So the externalization of it in this image, Svasa is Netzach and Hoid. Aidei Tiferes. Vitiftach Aidei Tiferes. We'll reopen through Tiferes. Which is like the, the opening of the body, of breath. Then it will be mashpi in the world of bria. Azofishu malchus. Then malchus, which is p, the mouth. Malchus dibur is connected to malchus. Will be able to draw down and to draw forth Hashem's praise. Minatzilus libria, draw it down from atzilus from the world of unity to the place of, of brokenness, to the place of bria. The place of separation, and then the bria will enter into atzilus. So, in very simple language, he's saying that Hashem means that my mouth, my mouth, my my malchus, will able to express in a correct way. If my malchus can express in a correct way, I'm the embodiment of bria. Let's just. Try to imagine that. If you're the body of the beer and you're expressing it in a correct way, then you can both connect to higher, to Atzilus, and Atzilus can come through you. So that, that would be somewhat the image. The next shtick, I want to, not in the parentheses, let's go to the next piece. Alav Dal Yud Chavin. When you think about this Alav Dal Nun Yud, these four letters, there are two types of dinin, two types of constrictions that come down to this world. One is, one is connected to the 320, which we said is connected to the 32 Shem Alekim's, right? 32 times 10, which is, which, three, which is 320, which is connected to the world of Chachma. Hare Sheikh, that, that's the idea of Chachma. And they then penetrate and enter into the world of Nukva, the feminine, which is Adnai. Adnai is Malchus. Therefore, Sheikh 320 is 5 times 640. 64. 64 times 5 is 320. So, what's the idea? Okay. These this shayish of the lamb and the beis alikim that's now in bina, that come from the lamb and beis alikim, which come from chachma, which means now the gvur is in the bina, and that's the name of alikim. Alikim also has five letters, aleph lamb and hey yud mem, which is five letters. That letter is already connected to the bina, which is gvura. Shugamken ois hey rishayna, which is connected to the, f- the first hey of the name of Hashem. This is all connected to shem alikim and sheikh nitzaytes. I don't know if you're following, but if you're following, the Sina Shalom will follow. And this is what the idea is to mom take the dinim to sweeten these judgments. How do you do that? How do you do that? Bina, we said, is also connected to the name of Lakim. There are five alphans, there are five letters of Aleph in the name Eka. 
how exactly Dari gets the five letters is complicated because Eka only has one Aleph. But if you spell Aleph with, you spell it out, then you have Hey Aleph and Hey Aleph, right? Aleph Lam and Pei, Hey Aleph, then Yud Vav Dal and Hey Aleph. So you get really four. I'm not sure how Dari actually gets to five. El Eka. Eka. Hey Alpha bin Shemesh Shem Eka Shem Bina. You don't have it? The third, third line for the bottom. You're drawing down from Shem Bina, which is connected to Eya. I just but but this this keep keep in this intention, this one one second, which is important, that somehow you're drawing down the five Alephs. Okay? And by drawing down the five Alephs, you're mamtik the din, you're sweetening the din. And this, this, um, this is the way it becomes benukva the zadim. We're talking. This is the way it becomes sweetened. Tichilos enukva nar. First, the nukva was in a state of nar, which means like a fool or or, or not developed. Nar is two hundred and is three twenty. Shaloyer el zivug was not ready for zivug, not ready for for for, for unity. Vaat enas is naira kimati shin chafei. Now it has the hay. Because you, you drew down the hay the, through the five aleph, which is hay, it becomes royal really zivuk. Do you understand anything that I said over here? Okay. Next piece. Gam soy zuv shchis shiv chayr. Okay. Next piece. Um, Gam yesh dinim b'chinas abeis. You see the third line. Then there's also dinim from the third level, from dinim from the second state. Vem hein gevuris mansapach. Remember we said that this hein gevuris mansapach is. The 280 parnitzoitzes. This is where sheikh nitzoitz is, and then this parnitzoitz. Parnitzoitz is a 380. The 380 are connected with Mansabach. Mansabach, the five final letters of the Torah, of the 24th letters of the Torah, in tonal numeric value, is, is 280. This is already from the, Malch, from, from the Gvura side. That's the minion of Mansabach. The numeric value of Gvura is Mansabach. When you're mam, when, ma, when you're mam, the, 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 you sweeten the mansapach, it becomes a set of par, it becomes para. How do you do that? How do you how do you the para? How do you mam shach that? Here he says, b'shem adnei. This is what you do through the name of adnei. How? He should tikach aleph shall aleph dal nun yud. When you take the aleph of aleph dal nun yud, v'nasat suris yud vav resh. So the aleph of aleph dal nun yud din, din five times. Is the Sheikh Nitzaitzes? So we're talking about the world of Din. If you take the Aleph and you divide it, you have you have a Yud on top, a Vav, and the 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 regal Hatachn Shal Aleph who besides Seer Resh. That he says that the the final little Yud on the other on the bottom side is actually a Resh. If you have that together, you have two hundred and sixteen, right? So the Aleph is actually two sixteen. Hey Resh Yud Vav, which is. The gematria and shalosim edim, yeah, called gematria par. If you take two sixteen plus the sixty four of din, you get to two eighty, which is par. But how do you sweeten this? Um, with the kachlam and how do you sweeten this? Kishar chavlo mashan leidi kamalchus v'yatsim nika adnei. That we should know that malchus with an yatsmoi is alav dal nun yud. Kishan the roims moisa b'shem hashem nishmas kol chayus nozilos erim zabeis tatosh levaya. When you draw down from the hay. Into Aleph Dal and Nun Yud, the Hey, which is connected to the le- five letters of Aleph, that's the way it becomes sweetened. Is this a- a- anyone's hopping exactly what this is about? Okay, if you don't, we're going to go further. But let me just say like this: what we have from Dari, besides like the density of the language, which obviously is, is there's a lot of oymik, there's a lot of depth to it, but it's very hard to. Uh, if you're not familiar with this this language, it's very hard to, to grasp. What he's saying, and we'll see how the, what the Baal Shem does with this. In simple language, if you have to, to say, okay, what did Ari just say? What did Ari say without all the, the gematrias and the American? What does Ari say? What does he say? He's saying something very simple. On a very something very simple, there is there is a principle that in order for there to be a, a hashpa. In order for it to be a flow, there has to be an ever chai, which means that there has to be an active giver that's giving to the recipient. 
right? If everything is plastic, there's no there's no unity. Unity is connected when there's chayas. When you have chayas, something is alive. You take uh, I don't know. Let's take two pieces of paper. You put them on top of each other. They're not going to connect. You put some water, a little chayas, it becomes connected. And you can use the imagination for any type of things. Anything that's, that's connected to to a, a union is connected to something that has chayas, has a livelihood. We're davening. And we're saying is that we're in the malchus. We're in the malchus on the lowest level, let's say, right? In the schematic idea of that there's upper worlds. We're malchus on the lower level. We're, try, we're saying that in our life, we're not receiving what we're supposed to be receiving. There's something that's blocked. There's something that the, the, the flow is not coming down correctly. Now, the reason why the flow is not coming correctly is because there's a, there's a, there's a problem. There's a cock. There's like there's a jamming between the mashpia and the makabo, between the giver and the receiver. We're the recipients of the light, and we're not receiving it correctly. The reason why the mashpia is not giving is because the mashpia doesn't have moichen. The mashpia in this, in this image would be, if we're malchus, the mashpia would be zarampin. Right? Are you familiar, familiar with this idea? So zarampin would be like the masculine, and we're the feminine. If we're the, ma- if we're the feminine recipients, the reason why we're not receiving from the masculine giver, which is kuchabrichu, is because kuchabrichu is is yashadu, or, or some type of state of, of slumber. Why is there slumber? Why is there, not, why is there no shefa? Because there's no moichen. Right? In other words, if you take it, take it into, into relationships, in other words, in order for someone to become alive, you need moichen. You need, intelli- you need some type of moach to become alive. Sometimes intelligence. Exactly. Intelligence brings... Now, on top of Zoram, and we're, we're thinking of this very, on a, on a literal, you know, higher, lower level. What's on top of Zoram, and the Midas? What's on top of that? Moichen. Which is Moichen? Moichen of Bina. The intelligence of Bina. And then on top of that is the Moichen of Chachma. Now, why is Zoram so uh, unactive that he's not being Mashpia to the Makabal? How come we're not receiving? Now, there could be problems with us, obviously. There could be issues that we're not open. And there could be, like in any relationship, there's some kaviyachl, there's some type of jam between the upper world and the lower world. Right? This is the, the, the way that he's understanding it. So he's saying that there's, there's forget about the, we're talking about the, the, big, the bigger pictures, we're saying there's some type of reason that the, the mashpia, the giver, is not actively engaged with the makabal. Why is the mashpia not actively engaged with the makabal? Why is the giver not actively engaged with the recipient? Because there's no moichen. Why is there no moichen? How come Bina doesn't give a moichen to Zar Ampin, and Zar Ampin will give right away to Malchus. What's the answer? What does Darizel say? What's the answer? Because there's Klippa of Bina, which is Par Netzaitzis, and there's Klippa of Chachma, which is Sheikh Netzaitzis, which means, in translated, is that there's some, uh, I don't want to say a defect, there's some type of like, you know, the, the, the system it's actually inherent within the system the system is, is jammed because the moichen of, of Bina of that type of intelligence the moichen of, of intelligence of Bina and the moichen of Chachma is not penetrating Zohar it's not alive in Zohar Ampen why? because there's concealments there's klipas you got this the scheme? okay now what are we what's our job then? our task now is to activate the moich of Bina to activate the Moyach Chachma, the reason why we can activate it because we're part of it, because we're connected to it, of course, but to activate that cosmic intelligence, the cosmic Moyach Bina, Hashem's, Hashem's Bina, Kaviachal, Hashem's Chachma, and to activate it to, to push away the Klippa of the Sheikh and the Parnitzaitis, to break them open, and if I can break them open, then the Moyach, the intelligence, will now flow directly into Zoram, Zoram will become alive, and Zoram will have Moyach, and then Moyach, Kishul and there's unity with Malchus, and we see everything we have. You follow? This is, this is what they say. In the system, Hashem created within the system because we Hashem wants us to participate in creation. In other words, that we have to be involved in the creation in the creative story. That it's not just that we're just recipients of creation, but we're co-creators in creation. And Hashem says the act of tefillah is what are we doing in tefillah? Is we're 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 unlocking the klipas that are surrounding the moyach of bina and the moyach of chachma. So when there's no klipas surrounding the moyach of chachma and bina, it can directly Activate Zor Ampen. When Kuchibrichu is activated, then Shechita receives its, its nourishment. Is it internal or external? Or so that's it. So according to the Balsha, according to the Rizal, I don't know. The answer is I don't know what that Rizal is saying. I don't know. I'm, this is all the way I'm, I'm understanding. The way you read the Torah Sari, 
at least the way the the Svardish Kabbalah read Taisari, that it's all external. This is like this is an external na- map. This is this is this cosmic event. You know, the in order for it to for, to rain correctly, right? You need a proper you know the atmosphere. Everything has to be the chef has to work in order for their life to grow. If there's something wrong in the in the ozone layer, whatever I don't know, then it's not going to rain correctly, and therefore it's not going to it's not going to have vegetation. So we're saying that this is on a cosmic level. Before we get to the person, there's some type of repair, and this, yeah, exactly. So there's some type of repair that you have to do. I just want you to understand this is what the Torah Sari is. The Torah Sarizal, if you if you really want to reduce it to like to, to understand what the Torah is, because sometimes you read that Rizal, if you do read Ari, and it's like, what are you talking about? This gematria, this thing. Like, what, what is this? What, what is it? How do you, you know, what, what are you supposed to be doing here? Like, what is it supposed to be? There's a, there's a system. You understand? You have to you have to decode a little bit what the system is. This is a little of decoding of this system. That what he's talking about is a very uh, spiritual, logical explanation of the process of creation, which is that there's a movement. Movement creates flow. When things are alive, if things are moving in a correct ma- matter, when there's chayshik, when there's, when there's any type of klipa, the things are not going in the correct order, and therefore the world is in, in a stuck state. What you're doing is, is now the kavana. so what does Dari say? What is the kavana? How do you break this open? You have to break it open through the name of al- the five alephs, five alephs of Eka. Then somehow you're going to do it with the letter aleph, because then the aleph is dal nun yud, which is din. Malchus is bro- broken up, and that's where you're going to break open these klippas of the sheikh and the par. Okay, you got that clear? That's clear. The next shtickle is a very, very small piece, but it's um, it's uh, it's the, the Degel writes the, the same Torah. The Degel is a, is a Enikel, his grandchild of Balshem. He writes the same. He writes Mamasha teaching for the Balshem. I mean, from the Arizal, but he changes the language a little bit, and this is interesting. He changes the language. He says like this. The next page. So the Pesach said Yosef was a Nair B'nei Bila, that he was shepherding the B'nei Bila. He's referring to the, the Kavanas of Priyat Chaim, of Shara Amida. What it says in, it says in Priyat Chaim, that what the, what the, what the Arizal writes about Hashem Sivasei Tiftach, Kihei Pamim Din, five times with 64, Misper Sheikh, is, is connected to the 320, Remember, we just said that. That's the klipa that's, that surrounds the world of Chachma. That's why the opposite of Chachma is the Shaitan and the Nair. And therefore, the Lamed Beis, which is the 32 times nine Alakim, 32 times Alakim, that has 10, is again 320. It's broken, it's broken open through the five Alephs of Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud. Darizal didn't say that. He said, Shemekah. Shemekah. So that's interesting. I don't think it's a toss of Tfus. I don't think this is a mistake, but this is, this is clear that he's saying, I have an answer to this. We're going to see, we're going to see the answer. But it seems like, is the five Alephs, five letters Aleph, of Shemeke or Shemeke 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 you know you say Omar Oyev Eredev Asig Achalag you ever you, ever, you know this in, in the you ever saw by Mkobolam in the very end of this Omar Oyev Eredev you know why I don't know if you ever, you ever know this but uh, this is because it's five alphas there's five alphas so it's a big Hamtaka Sadin then so Omar Oyev Eredev Asig Achalag these are five alphas okay what are the five alphas Let's hold that for a second. We don't know what these five olives. They seem to be either connected to Shem Adai or Shem Elikim. And, uh, and then he says, Your mom tick, Behe Alpha, Shem Sfosay Tiftach, the Dabra, Shem Bne Bilo, Hainel, Lev Hey, Ritzlam, Shashech, and Tsoitz, and Shashech, Lama, Bain, Sochem, and Tom Behe Alpha. And then it goes from Nair to Naira. Okay, that's, that's Bila. Bila has the Hey. Rachel doesn't have a Hey. Leah has the Hey. Rachel doesn't have the Hey. Therefore, she doesn't have the Hey, which is Mom the Dinim. She takes Bila, has two Hey's. So when Rachel taking the hay from Bila, she's able to have children, right? There's, what's children? Children means there's, a, there's something stuck. Mm-hmm. When you can't have there's something that's not, so you're breaking it open through the five alphin, which is connected to the hay. You get to the hay alphin, that's the way Rachel would have a child. Okay, that's, that's come on, that's what the, the devil says. Okay, says the, says the, says the Toldos. The Toldos says the Torah like this. Shamati. 
Shamati. What is the idea of the Aleph? A very small Torah from the Baal Shem. But Shamati and Mori, Ki Aleph who soyed Alufa Shaloylam. Tamar Vagon is Gavay. First of all, you should know that the Aleph represents the Alufa Shaloylam. Represents the mass of the world. There's the next page. It says Paytas on top. Shamati. The Aleph represents the master of the world. What is Bez? Oh, he's Bez, who Bez Alf. Bez is just two letters of Aleph. And so what's Gimel? Three Alephs. Ad, oh, tough. Two letters of Aleph. So what is, what is, it's really the reduction of one. Two is not two. Two is one twice. Three is three. In other words, when you look at the world, a table has four legs. It's four times the name of Hashem. Four times Hashem expressed in this leg and that leg. You understand? There's only one. And the one is expressed in one or two or three or, two or, two or multiple. But it's always the one. That's the principle. But really, there's a, there's a shayla that the Mukabalim asked. How come the letter Aleph, if the letter Aleph is the highest letter, and even the, the, Kedusha, the, the Kedusha Levi also asked the Shailah, B'Shem HaKadmoyim, it's brought down, I forgot, or Agonus, no, Kino Zegas, when you ask Kital, he asked the Shailah, why is it that the first letter of the Aleph Beis is the lowest? If the first Beis of the Aleph Beis is the highest, so it should be the highest number. Yeah. In other words, you should count the other way around. Aleph should be 400, Beis should be 300, it should go higher, because if Aleph is the peak, so there should be the peak numbers, the most numbers. He says, no, it's the opposite. Really, numbers, numbers is always a, 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 a tzura, The form of a, of a number already is re, is a is a reduction, is a symptom of the in, of infinity. So the closer you are you are to infinity, the less number it is. You're following. So tough is four hundred madrega separate from the from one. One is the first expression of infinity into finitude. This is what the Kedusha Levi writes, that if you look at the, the name of Yud Kei Vavke, the Yud, Hev, and Vav, and, and Vav, these are the three letters of Yud Kei Vavke, they're, the, they're the, the, the smallest numeric value of all the 22 letters in the of Aleph Beis. Which means, uh, no, obviously Yud is 10, and then Aleph Beis is, is 3. No. If you spell Aleph out, it's 111, Aleph Lam Pei. You spell Beis out, it's Beis, it's Beis Yud Tav. It's 412. Etc. The sm- the smallest letters, if you spell out, is going to be yud, hey, and vav. Yud is twenty, hey could be six even, and vav is twelve, right? So the smallest number, take any letter, kuf, re, shin, you'll see the numbers are very very large. There are hundreds, or at least at least close to that. The close, the smallest numbers are yud, kei, vav, yud, yud, hey, and vav. Therefore, the the Kedusha says that's the reason why the Hashem chose yud, kei, vav, kei, because they represent something that's the closest to infinity. So, by the way, this one, this, this is Aleph is, by the way. I don't know if you know this, but I don't want to talk about this. In the, the Mukabalim, there are certainly the early Mukabalim, not so much in the Ari, but before the Ari, um, believed, believed they, 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 and actually wrote it out, that Aleph is the first letter of Yudke Vavke. It's Aleph Yudke Vavke. And uh, Abulafi has a whole system of, 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 of practice that's based on this idea. This is this, this strong shrashan for this idea in, in the Zohar and other places. But Aleph is considered part of the name of Hashem. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about the silent dal. But let's let's just hold it. This is this is the this is the structure that the, the Baal Shem is writing, and tough is the final one. Okay. That's what I want. To, also important. When you get to the bottom, to the lowest level, the Baal Shem flips it inwards. He's not talking about the klipa that exists in the external world. He's saying, and what is the furthest removed? That's your machshav zaras. That's like you're, you're you're trying to daven, or you're trying to focus, and your negative intruding thoughts. That's the machshav zaras. Okay, there's a whole elevation how you do that. This idea, this idea, by the way, um, This idea that the Baal Shem Tov says 
that Aleph, Bays is two Alephs. Now we found that there's a source for this in the Goinim, which is kind of kind of interesting. So there's something the Sefer called the Kutimir of High Gon. Kutimir of High Gon, Reb High Gon was a big Mekovel. We're not clear exactly. It's very hard to understand what what, what he's writing. A lot of the Goinim's uh, writings are very hard to write, understand. But he writes this Kutimir of High Gon, the Sefer that they printed. He says Mamish's word. I just want. It's interesting to see it. This is the. This is. This seems to be a mocker, a source of Al I, I. I don't believe that Balsham saw this. I mean, he saw it. You know, on on a different plane. I don't think he actually saw the safer. But he says over here. Look at this. This line. Yichblu beis alfin aleph aleph and iker beis. That's just the line I want to show you. You see that? That uh, beis. That when you double the letter aleph, you get beis. In the next page, you have from the Kosher Samagid. The Kosher Samagid is put out these old Sifra Kabbalah. The Kosher Samagid was a big collector of a lot of Svarim. And he wrote commentaries, a lot of very interesting Svarim. And uh, he put out a Sefer, this, he put out a, the, the traditional of Haigon. And he wrote, a, he wrote a period called Neri Yisrael. And on the bottom, if you look at the next column, not on the bottom, on, this, on, the, on the Neri Yisrael, he writes, Umasha Kosov ki bekeful beis alpha nikke beis. That when you double Aleph twice, it becomes base. You see that on the left, on the left side? All the Torah is Rak Aleph. The Torah is only Aleph. There's only Aleph. That is only Aleph. There's only one. There's only one. There's only one. Ah, you see many more than one? Okay, that's the multiples of one into different, into different reflections of the many. Every, everything is olive. Yeah, it's a co- every, no, not only the whole world, everything. It's a fractal of olive. It's a fractal. It's like fractal geometry, exactly. It's a fractal. It is, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's, there's one, and one is refracted into various different things. You have to be the wise one. This he talks about the, 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 the Degel said the Lashon over there. You have to be the Tzaddik or the. Or the if it's a Dika Shulchan de Matanisa, you have to be the wise one to figure out, like, how do you get that back into the olive? You have that page that I that I sent you, Levy? It's, uh, it's to the WhatsApp. Does everyone have it? Yeah, okay, so look inside. There's a shtickle from Dagal. It didn't make it into the page. The if you look there, you have it. It's a Dagal and Vayeshev. You see it? Okay, Vatisha Vatisa Aishas Adonia Sanel Yosef. That the Aishas Adonia her her eyes were lifted to, to Yosef. Yesh Bekalafi Anias Daiti. This is the Dagal writing. According to my estimation, to my understanding, this Dvorim Amukim Alpia Kadamish Gabalti Moir Zikni. According to the certain principles that I received from my 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 grandfather the Balsham. Achadain Lo Izachisi Lahalbush Advorim. I still didn't have the merit to really draw it down into into good language. To write them, to speak to them. This is what the devil is writing. I'll merit to say the teachings of the Hashem that I'm able to write it down. Now I'm just going to give very shortly what I want to say. I'm just going to give you a cliff notes of this idea very quickly. So this is obviously very, very big Torah that he heard from his grandfather. And he says that he, he wasn't Zoycha yet to merit to, to, to finally write it down. What's the Torah? So it says, Yosef was very beautiful in his, in his Torah, in his posture, and in his appearance. That's the pe'er, the beauty of yut, of the letters yutke. The, that letters yafa Torah, If you s- switch around the letters, you have the beauty of Hashem of yutke. Yutke is a kolish baruch Hu, transcendence. Yifa mara, and then what's beauty in appearance? Hu ashchina. That's the level of the shchina. Shu is mara vasplakaria. The shchina is the mara, is the vision, and the splaklaria, the 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 way we see things through the, the lens through which we see things. 
Therefore, what Yosef means, Yosef who? Yosef is a, a tzaddik. What's the tzaddik? What's the yisoid? What's the, the attribute of yisoid? Yisoid is the attribute that connects. Hamiyach kutsu brichu shu yifas toyer v'shchinte shu yifas mara. That Yosef is the midas yisoid that connects kutsu brichu, which is zayam, and all the six spheres. And he is metavachet. He, he he draws it together that it now can be received by the makabel, which is the fasmar. Or maybe at the very second of Kalish Baruch that brings beauty. Al der chachin sadam toyer panim shei amoychim. How is this done? It's like sort of like in the opposite direction. In other words, if you say that moichin allows your sight to be activated, right? Then when when your sight is activated. By default, that also means that the moichin is being drawn. Otherwise, your site could not be activated. So what... It's going down. Yes, sure, sure. right? What's that? One second, one second. What's going up? What's going up? What's going up? It's both ways. In the beginning, he writes it's both ways, right? He says, the and Bria are going up. So the moichin now, the, the face of, of Zorampin becomes lit up because his moichin is drawing down moichin. And that becomes Marjah was Shechina Meir Bechina's Kuchu Bichu Kamaya Levana. Now that light also lights up the Shechina and now it becomes Lichtik. It becomes a lit it becomes illuminated. Which is, the, which is that? That's the Levana, that's the moon. Shemakabal Soyer Mena Shevish, which receives light from the sun. The sun is Kuchu Bichu. And Shechinta is Malchus, which is the Levana, which is the moon. Which means the moon becomes illuminated. What does the moon becoming illuminated mean? I just want you to understand what does that actually mean? What the, the moon, the Shekhinah becomes illuminated means we see Hashem's presence, the Shekhinah's presence in this world. In simple language, right? That's what it means. That it, it becomes a reflection of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of Kuchibrichu. You look at the world, you don't see brokenness, you don't see, you, you don't see destruction, you don't see chaos, you see order, you see presence, you see divine light. Right? That's when the Shekhinah is, is lichtik. The Shekhinah is lit up with the face of Kuchibrichu that's lighting it up. This is Vatisa Aishas, Pirush, Betchila Hoi Vatisa. First there was Vatisa. First there was Vatisa, but the, the, the Vatisa Aishas, Adinel and Alanea, it says that the, 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 the woman was looking at, <coughs> the, she, was, she lifted her eyes to look at Yosef. First there was a, a negative look, which means that there was a look for, to see something, how, you know, this, how the story unfolds there, <laughs> which is like a negative vision of this world, to see something how I can possess it, which is like a negative way. How could I own it? And then, then it was transformed that it became Aishas. What is Aishas? Hashem Sevasa Tiftach. That Aishas is, is the Rosh Tevis of Hashem Sevasa Tiftach. You see how everything's like slowly coalescing into something over here? That there was a type of vision that was, that was experienced, whether internal or external, because you can also see that internal. But there was a type of vision that was a negative vision of this world. Negative means sees to see the world as, as, as in a place of corruption and destruction and, and chaos and, and selfish. Like, how, what do I get out of this world? What can I take out of it? And then there was a transformation that it was transformed into Aishas, which is like the correct formation of, the, of these letters. So that... Uh, Vatisa, it's the next Torah that Dagal is going to say this, we don't have to read the whole thing, that Vatisa is the same letters of Aisha's backwards. Tisa is Aisha's backwards. But when something is backwards, it's a Churayim, it's like the negative side. When something is in its correct formation, that's the positive side. So when things were negative, which was Vatisa, it was transformed into Aisha's, which is the correct vision. And the correct vision is Hashem Sefos Tiftach. When you do Hashem Sefos Tiftach, you're actually correcting the vision, the internal vision that you're able to see the world in, the, in its correct form. Weiter. Let's, let's build on this. Next shtickle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where are we all in? Okay, this is a quick... The Dagle. Okay. Me so Me so I really want to finish this. So, you're with me? Me so bad I'm sorry, love. How you lay me some? Okay. Yesh lay me delfin is daiti. Yesh was the ram is nifl dover amok. 
it, I'll explain something that's very deep. Kiyadua, Malchus Nikr Peh. Shusai Dadir, Malchus is considered pe, mouth, which is the, the quality of speech. V'yizgala samachshava ide dibur. The right, the, the right column, the, the Degel. It says Degel Shmois. The next page. You don't have it? Yeah. Malchus is Peh. Peh is Dibur. Speech. Speech is the revealing of thought. Kishir Chalil Yisol ain't a Mativim Maseim. When Klal Yisol is not Mativim Maseim, when Klal Yisol is not doing their actions in a correct way, Nasa Besoid Ilam. The Lamti Dumiya. Mm-hmm. That it becomes the ilm comes means that your speech cannot be expressed. Now, if you have, if you're in a good state, whatever that means, but if you're in a good state, what that means is that your thoughts penetrate your speech and your speech comes naturally. In other words, let's think of it a different way. If, I, if you have something you're not really clear about, it's not clear to you, this understanding. And it's like it's muddied and it's a little ambiguous. You know, you don't really have a, cl- a clerk in this issue. And then you try to speak it. The words are not going to come out clear. But if you have behir as if you have the thing clear in your head, then from the machshava, from the thought, it goes straight into speech, and the speech becomes a direct reflection of the thought. But when there's when there's a, a, a constriction in the in the speech, when it's an ilam, when you can't speak, when you're when you're mute, it's because the machshava. Is not finding its proper means to express itself. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be bedibur, clear, but it could be. You can dance. Let's say a person is very happy, and they want, and if the 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 emotion of happiness will express itself. If it's, it's if it's an overflowing of emotion of happiness, will express itself. It can express itself. You dance. You can express you sing. You can express itself. You write. Whatever you're going to do, this is going to be a direct flow from the thought from the inner world into the outer world when there is when that doesn't happen that that's considered din that's considered there's a constriction in a very simple language a person can be very traumatized and cannot speak about his trauma it's because there's din and there's the, the person becomes mute it's it there's a certain uncomfortability with the trauma which should be which does not allow them to express it and at the moment there's some type of level of atta- detachment it becomes easier to speak so the moment things become cleaner within a person and easier within the person the more it's easy to speak about it now some things again some things I want to say it's not that some, you always have to speak about it but it can be expressed the expression of the expression the, the free flow of the inner movement moves outwards very cleanly very freely we're, we're going to talk about the mamish next. That's the next story from the Degel. Mamish, the same thing. So then he says, "Al dimdik adin besoid em mi lo aidei adas." What's the dimdik yotz bezgal as ayres shem shavu besoid yud kevaf ke? Now the machshava is the yud ke. So I'm talking zin shechul par v'nas v'zeh Hashem s'vasei tiftach besoid eishes anisker. Okay, that's the same word. I just wanted to show you that that's the same idea. That it becomes clean. Your Torah, what what you just mentioned, the Gemara. Is the next is the next degel? There's a lot of degel here, but these are all tires that he heard from his from his grandfather. So this is the way this is we're hearing it from the Bolshem. Im shigur tefilas befiv the left the, the left column. If my tefilas shigur befiv, if it's easy for me to say the words of davening, then I know that it's miskabel. Then I know that my that my tefilah was answered. My prayers are answered. What does tefilas shigura? What does shigura mean? Meshagin koishal bracha shulosh and shiluach. Meshagin means that it's sent out. Like it's a messenger. That the machshavas toivas, the good thoughts, the thoughts that he's thinking just flow out of his mouth easily. They this they pour out of his mouth, and that is Hashem Sivas Tiftach who Rosh Tevis Aishas. That's Hashem Sivas Tiftach. That is Hashem Sivas Tiftach is Aishas. The idea of it's 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 being reflected in a correct in a correct way. But then he adds a little piece, and he says, and that is what I heard from my teacher, from my grandfather, the Baal What is the idea of Eishis Yifas Toyer? Yifas Toyer is, is a captive woman. That a captive woman means that there is machshavas internally. 
What does a captive woman mean? A captive woman means that there's, there's, a, there's a soldier. That's the story, literally the story. And and a person goes and he marries this woman, right? And somehow, and he ends up living with this woman in, in a healthy way, in a holy way. But he's re- there's a redemption here. There's 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 there's, there's a situation where it's it's not kosher, it's not correct. And through this process, there's a redemption of this process. What is in, internally? What is the isha yifas toyer in the internal experience of the person? That's the machshav azaras. That's your negative thoughts. The negative thoughts, which come into your mind, not only during davening, no matter what, it's, it's like negative thoughts can be also doubt, uncertainties, and shl- that you're shlomah, all these negative voices that come into your head that tell you that you're not able, not capable, all these negative sa- voices that come into your head, there has to be a type of redemption of those thoughts. What's the redemption of those thoughts? The redemption of, of, of those thoughts is that it becomes shugur b'fiv, that your mind becomes clean and clear that it's not all over the place, but it just it's it it goes from the from your from your thoughts into your speech, and it's just it's coming out, and it's not being distracted. But there has to be a redemption of that. What's that? So if you look uh, very quickly at then the next page. You'll see the shchinish kaviyachu, which just goes into a whole. It's the next page of the Degel and Parshas Kisaitze. This goes into a whole Torah, which we're not going to talk about. But this goes into a whole Torah of, of, of elevating machshavas, to elevate your thoughts. Without getting into what the, well, what the devil is talking about specifically here, what he's, what, what, he's try, what he's saying is that if you can daven, remember, Hashem is in the Torah, Sari is talking about breaking up the clippers of the moich and the moich and the chachma bina, so laugh with Zorah, but the pregnant malchus that we should receive, the Lashem says, this is all going on within you. This is all happening within you. There's, there's blockages in your own mind. That even if, forget about even in davening, because davening is a very hard thing. Blockages means, let's talk about even a, phys- a simple physical thing. You want to make parnasa. And you, you, you put yourself, your mind to this job. You say, I'm going to do it well. And then a thousand thoughts come flooding into your head. You can't do this, and you're not going to able to, and you're shlomazel, and it's not going to work. And that distracts you. And that doesn't allow for the free flow of your machshava to Yadib or to Yamaisa. There's no, there's, no, there's no flow within you. And therefore you're not successful. Because you think you're a Shlomaz and you think you're not capable. You understand? This is, it's not just in a, in, a, in a context of tefillah. It's a context of life. There's, 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 there's internal blockages within our own selves that are blocking the Shefa, the flow to come through us. What do you do? The... the, 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 the the, the, what we're trying to do is to get to a place where these things are broken open and you have clarity and there's clean movement. Shigur b'fiv. The thought comes to you. Then you act, you act on it. You express it. And it moves healthy. Right? What you do with in particular, that's, that's this, what the, this tagle is talking about, is you elevate the machshava, you go to the machshava, the root of the machshava, this. that's a whole Torah in, in Torah of Hashem. But what he's trying to say is we have to get to Hashem Sefasei Tiftach you think it's Hashem Sufasa too? Hashem Sufasa? No, Hashem Sufasa is, is breaking open everything that it should be clean. It should move. Things should just flow correctly. And remember, we started this whole thing that the Narizal was speaking about is that it happens through the hey, the five Alephs. Amar Oyev Ered Vasika Chalashol, the five Alephs. What are these five Alephs? The five Alephs of Adnai. The five Alephs that connect the Shem Echo. What are these five Alephs? So here we're going to go very quickly. Do you have a little bit of time? Everyone's uh, still with me? I think we can do this another 15 minutes. I think we can. Because then we can actually start next week. I mean, we started, but, you know, start again. So the Gemara says, whoever is a Sameach Chas whoever makes, brings joy to a Chas Nekala, Sameach Brings gets as merits these five sound chasin called simcha. Kedua she say chasin says the the kala whom teresh will teresh will teresh will teresh Okay, shamatim avin nezik. This is what I want to. This is this is what I want to tell you. I heard from my grandfather. I heard from the the, the holy balsham. Ke ein loch dibur katan vegadol. There is nothing in this world that doesn't have an aleph. When a person speaks, there is an immediately aleph. There is an aleph. 
When a person wants to say something, ga ba ba ga, he right away says the word aleph, the sound of aleph. Yes, chamisha alfin. There are five alephs. Bechol echad shel adibur yes be chamisha alfin v'havin. You should know that every speech, every time there's an expression, there's an expression of these five alephs. What does this mean? So here it's here it's changing. In the Torah, Sari, when he's talking about the five Alephs, it's an Aleph that's connected to Hashem. Either Hashem Aleph, Eka, or like the Deca brings out Hashem Ari, Hashem Adnai. Right? It's connected to a particular name, a sacred name. Here he's saying that Dibur itself, speech itself, creates Aleph. What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? You that. Said that every letter is really Aleph. Yes, so how does it work? How does it work? It's olives. So why five? What's five? Okay. So let's let's hold on for a second. Yes, you're right. But what does that mean? So there's one way to understand it is that it has to do with with the five Nukudas. Now there, there's more than five Nukudas, but there are five what is called Malachim Nukudas, kings. And there's five Avadim Nukudas. There are five servant Nukudas. The five nekudas are the five vowels are vowel. The tekudas says vowel is the is the ruach, the is the, ruach, the, the, the spirit that enlivens the guf. It gives it, it gives it animation. That's what the, that's what a vowel does, right? You have an aleph without a vowel, it doesn't doesn't say anything. But the the the, the spirit, the nefesh, gives it the, the vitality is the nekuda. That's why also also it says in Sefer Abar that the idea of nekudas are always round. You ever notice this? The nekudas are round. Oisis are square, because square means it's it's boxed in. Round means it rolls it. it means it, it, it gives it movement. That's round. So that's the image. Literally, the, the, the image of that. It has to do with, I don't want to get into this whole thing, but just very quickly, you know that the Nekudas, the, the signs of the Nekudas has to do with the shape of your mouth. Okay. If you, like for example, E, U, A. So that's where actually you put the Nekudas, U is a dot. A is two dots here. E is a small dot on the bottom. Ah. So actually the way the mouth is presented is the way the Nekudas are created. But they're created in the Kudas are vowels, which is always round, which means that they're moving things along. So there are five, five vowels. The five vowels is 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 found in the in the Pasik Petuche Chaisam. So it's A A U O E. Those are the five primary vowels. Those are the Avadim. That's one way to understand it. And this is this is the, I don't want to get into this, but this is the 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 Pardis brings down the Shana Kudas. He brings down this whole piece. He doesn't bring it about about the Hey Alfim. But if you look, you see over there, I have it a little under on. And the Kudus, Avadim, Vamalachim, you can read for yourself if you're, if you're interested. But that's not, that's, not the, that's not the way we want to go. We want to go in a different direction. What's the different direction? And you see in this Chikr Lev, the Sefer brings it down that it's a Chamesh, that the five Alpha and the Baal Shem, the next, si- next side, is actually the five Tnuas. But not true. Not the way it works. In my opinion. I can only tell you my opinion, but I think this is not the Vart. The Vart is like this. There's a Sefer called Mein Chachma. It's a very old Sefer. It's a book that was written by the Kadmoinim. We're not really sure who wrote the Sefer, who wrote the Sefer, but it's a very mystical Sefer. It's the Sefer that in the Agdom of Lukuti Yikarim, it says this is, this is the Sefer that the Baal Shem learned with the Magid. When the Maggid came to learn by the Baal Shem, the famous story is that the Maggid came to the Baal Shem for Shabbos, and uh, he wasn't impressed. He, okay, Baal Shem said to him, but he wasn't, he wasn't impressed. And Matzah Shabbos is already, already leaving, and the Baal Shem sent, sent his Talmud to bring him back. And he said he doesn't think, he doesn't think, he's, he's moving on, there's, there's other rabbis, so they keep going to another, another person. The Baal Shem says, no, he wants to, wants to speak to him. And the Baal Shem brought him into the room, and uh, the Baal Shem said, before you leave, just ask me if you have any questions. Do you have any questions? He said, yeah, I do have a question. I have a question to Zoyer. And uh, he, asked the Shaila, he asked the question to the Baal Shem, and the Baal Shem started telling the answer. And the, 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 the Maggit says that, he, that when the Baal Shem started speaking, this is the, the way he describes it, is that everything that, the, that I would say, that was, he was, when he was telling us, that says in the Zoyer, he was telling me, it says in the Zoyer, became revealed in the room. 
So when he's, he's speaking about the earth, there's these higher lights and angels and, and these, these spiritual realities, it became tangible. What that means is that the Balshemtov, it's a long shmuz on its, on its own, but the Balshemtov was not teaching information. Well, the Balshemtov gave the, the Magad, why the reading where the Magad became a Talmud of the Balshem, experience. He gave him the experience of, of Torah he, he He opened them up to experience. You can read the page, you can read and say, okay, that's a nice the idea. No, he gave him what is the, what is the experience of, of this Torah. And one of the swarm that he, that he learned with him, Be'iun, is this Sefer Me'en Chachma. It's a very fascinating Sefer, and it's, it's, it's a very deep Sefer, but it's, it, you have to read it very closely, and it, it's, it's very, I don't want to use the word experiential, but it is. It's like, it's, it's Torah Sassoyed in a very, very embodied, a very experiential way. For some reason, no one learns this Sefer, but if the Baal have learned it, and the Magad learned it, then I, then I think we should learn it. So the Sefer is like this. He talks about something, and here it appears. It appears, the five alphan appears in the Sefer, and we don't have to resort, we don't know. From the Kalmainim, probably the early Rishonim, the Gainim. It says, Lamed Ches on top. Ketzad. Right, this is what he says. We're going to, explain, we're going to search things that are hidden and, and secret and open. The name of Adnai. The Aleph divides itself into five parts. This is what it, this is what the, the Balsham was talking about all throughout the Degel. The Omar, all the five, what is the five of this? When you open your mouth, it's very hard to read because it's not so clean what he's saying. It's not so clear. Now when you open your mouth, immediately there is two sounds. Immediately when you open your mouth, it's ah. Okay. The ah is a double ah. It's not ah, it's ah. Okay, when you give an out breath. Vim toimer alim zhaq zhaq ba'arba a a o o. Or a a a a. But I think it's a a o o. Or either way. But it's it's a a a a. Ukshatosim a shnaim la roish a shnaim la soif. Tim so she ash aver bin time. And then there's what 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 is called the the in between period when you're breathing. There's ah and ah, oh, right? So there's an inhale and an exhale. One is the, these are very primary sounds. This is like the, the, the most primary sounds. This, this is like pre-language. In this very primary sound, it's the ah and then the oh. It could be an inhale and exhale. And it could be, the variations could change. It could be oh, okay, oh, oh but it's, it's similar to that, that sound. So when he says, this that every dibur again when you say every dibur every speech has five alphan you can say it means because every dibur really is the aleph because the aleph the tough the tough the base base is two alephs which is that tire from the from high gone that, that because everything originally goes into one but that's a conceptual thing I understand that every single dimension in this world is a fractal of the original source so when I look at a table I'm seeing a lekus in the table right that's what I'm seeing. But really, it's only echad, and the echad becomes kaviyachol multiplied into the many. But the many is still one with the echad. That's why Hashem alekin Hashem echad. What is the echad? Even this ches, this dalad, it's all still one, right? That's but that's still that's still a construct of the mind, right? I need to I need to relate to it, not just as a, a construct of, of an intellectual construct. I want to experience it. So he says, yes, what you're experiencing is that when you speak, for example, and everything comes to speech, but in the world of speech, that's, that's, the, that's the way it's expressed. Every time you speak, you're saying multiple words. You're saying tr- trillions of different sounds, tens of different sounds. But underneath all the sounds, if you reduce all the sounds, you get to the primal sound, which is the sound of ah. Okay. Love, and you need to hear Shaifer, and now comes the Torah from the, from the Alter Rebbe. The Alter Rebbe writes like this. I think five minutes, we'll go. Ten minutes. 
Loving the Kriya Shoifer. What's the idea of Kriya Shoifer? Al Pi Kavanah Sabal Shem Tov. So the, the, the Alter Rebbe, there's a mimer from the Alter Rebbe, that the Alter Rebbe says we're, we're going to try to understand Tkiyah Shoifer, Al Pi Kavanah Sabal Shem, which is a very mysterious mimer because we have nowhere is recorded where the Baal Shem said Kavanah Sabal Shem. And what is the Kavanah Sabal Shem? There's a long mimer, he never said the Kavanah Sabal Shem is. So he says, he has a mimer, he says we're going to find that according to the Kavanah Sabal Shem, what's the intentions of the Baal Shem, the Kavanah the, the the mindset of the Balshem, but he never says what it is, and this is proof that this itself is the Kavanah's Balshem. What we're going to read right now, this is the Balshem. And the Sikhs speaks like this in one of the Sudas. Okay, I just want to go very quickly, but here, here you see this Torah of, of the Balshem, what we talked about, the Ah, in, in, a, in, in, in a real thing. He says there's Koyal in this Dibur. Koil, the Hina Mita Zina Koil, who rak Koil Koil is already sound, which is already a particular sound, a voice, has, is, or has a, has, is Ruach, is Eshmaim Ruach, it has a certain structure. Avalu, oh, you have a Luvav, they never get Oasis that they were cloud. Beginners in a Dibu, Beginners Davka, Beginners Avaras, Oasis, Mikhulukum, Shakam, Vemishanam, but Dibu already has speech, which is already defined, structured. So you have Koil, which is an unstructured thing. And you have Dibur, which is structured. So Dibur is really very much disconnected, dis- disconnected from the original sound. Sound and speech, even though they come from the same place, sound, speech is, is, is formed sound, but they seem to be, the sound seems to be something very primal. But still we see that they're connected. Obviously, you breathe, that's how you speak. You have, and sound creates, Dibur creates, coil creates Dibur. Okay, then it's called a prat. That's what I want to say. There's something between sound and speech. And that is, we see, we see literally, you see literally in the body that you cannot express breath without sounding the sound of ah, of Aleph. The sound of breath is already, comes down already with a particular form, which is the sound of Aleph. He says it can be like ah or ha, similar. He, he goes on to like explain it a little, but at the bottom, if you look at the bo- bo- last two lines, Valpiroiv, aim bekola poishot ayotzima hevel alev, rak bavoros ois Aleph, Dafka kamoi a e or a, I guess if you're, you have a nasal, so you say e, a, whatever, but the, that's the expression. That's the sound that comes out. So the Balshemtiv is saying, then he goes into a whole Torah of, of what's the Kavanah Satkiyas. That the Kavanah Satkiyas Shoifer is to blow that primordial sound, that ah. So let's, let's, let's go back. If the whole, I'm not going to get into the whole Arikas, the whole. Conversation, but the whole idea of Tkia Shoifer is to break the Parna Tsoitzes. That's the whole avoid of Tkia Shoifer. You know anything about Kamana Sari? That's the whole thing. Par Shoifer is Shav Par. You're mash for the Par. You're, you're, you're equalizing the, the, the 200th. But how do you do it? So comes along the, the Alter Rebbe and ex- is explaining the Torah of the Balshem, which we see in the Balshem in front of Yakiv, going back to the Degel, that what is that? That is actually the sound of Ah. The, the, the cry, the kol poshut of the tkiya sound, the, the simple cry of a person saying, ah, that is what is metakin, which is the ah, is the five alephs. That is the root of all sound. That breaks open all the din. And where do we see it clearly in the next page? Because here is mamish, often this, this Torah, for an pichot skar, it's a, a Talmud Chavah from the Baal Shem. From the Baal Shem. Kavana es Hashem Sefasei Tiftach. The idea is Hashem Sefasei Tiftach, again, the Torah Sari, which is Yud Lamay Levav, Yud Lamata, Lamata Kadinim, all the things that we spoke about in the, what we learned in, in Shara Amida in, in Ari, Priyat Chaim. Again, getting into Lamad Beis, Siva Sochach, Mabina, whatever, Dinim. Now, Kisha Adem Tzoyek La'Kadosh Baruch Hu, Ah! Because that's my college baruchu. Aidez a hochoit de chadinim. 
Schneite durch die Dinim. This is full circle of the whole Torah. That what is the Aleph of Hashem Sefasei Tiftach? The sound of the Aleph. Not the structure of the Aleph, and not what the Aleph represents, and not the you have to divide it to the Yud, to the Vav, to the Ration. The sound is, say, Ah, Hashem Sefasei. Goydu l'anacha, she sheveres chatzi gufa shaladam, or sheveres gufa shaladam. Right? Machlik zara v'rim yechnan. Brachas and Ksuvas. What's the, the Ah? The Ah! When you're going through, this is, if you want to like, like bring it down. If you're going through a, 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 a difficult time and you have machshavas that are running and you want to be shaveris gufa, you want to just break open the physicality, you want to have ispashas gufa, you want to have like a certain, a release from the, from the strictures of the body, from the concealments of the body, from the, from the clippers of the body. Says the Hashem, you know what you do? Just say ah! Just give a big krechs. There's a, there's a, it says in the Yomim that, that, that every krechs of a yid until you moist Mashiach is going to come from the from the from the from the from the oil of the Bashem. From the oil of the, the, the all the krechs. What does it mean? This is what it means. The krechs of the ah. You don't have to say what ah is. I ve I. That's already already a, an interpretation. The ah is shivers. The anoch achas. The, the the one break bre- opens you. Not like Larry, because the Gemara talks about that sometimes as a negative thing. But the one break opens you, expands you. The one, the one, if you want to use the monitor, the one big out breath. The one breath. The, take one deep breath, and then the whole Shmanasa changes. That's what he's saying. You want to, you want to show some you want to get, you want to want clarity, you want it to move on a cosmic level, on a spiritual level, on an inner level. You want your machshavas to move, you want everything to be shagur, but everything to just flow out of you. Just give a, a deep crash, a deep, ah. A release, and then you're going to have a gewaldic, a gewaldic adavni. So here you see, this is a, this is like in in. This could be this could be a, this could be a whole safer in itself. But here you see, Mamash, a, a beautiful idea where you you have a rizigatoyer from the Torah Sari, like a very important Torah, and it's deep and it's complicated and gematrius, and then you start unpacking the way the Balshem taught it in all different places. All of a sudden, you see there's like a whole or, and it's taking the same thing. It's not like there's, there's another Torah, there's another way of looking. He's taking the same structure and, he, and, he's, and, and the Baal Shem gave a new chais into the whole structure. It's, it's about how could I put myself into this conversation, not just on an abstraction, an intellectual level. How could I, Hashem Sufos Tiftoch, how could I be in the, she, in the Aleph that's going to break the open old dinim? The Anacha Achas, the Hei Aleph. And Bezer Hashem, next week we'll start, with, uh, we'll start hopefully with the Shmanasar.